Good morning, everyone. It's a little bit before 7 o'clock. I've been up since 5.30, I think. I'm in Colorado. I drove here yesterday. It was a 10 or 11 hour drive. It cost about $125, $150 in gas in the Yukon. Not too bad. Yesterday was the first day and today is the second day of a two week trip, mostly through Colorado. I've done shamefully little in the mountains of Colorado. I've not given Colorado the attention it deserves. I've spent a fair amount of time in the desert in western Colorado, but I haven't really gone east very much into the, into the proper mountains. And so that's what I'm seeking to rectify a little bit on this trip. Right now I'm hiking up Mount Elbert. It is the highest mountain in Colorado. It is also the highest mountain in the Rockies in the US and Canada. And now we are completely above tree line and we have a nice little sunrise here. It's a little bit windy now that I'm out of the trees. I think this right here is Mount Massive, which is the second highest mountain in Colorado. And this is the way I'm headed. That is Mount Elbert. This isn't an especially impressive mountain. It's not especially noteworthy, other than the fact, of course, that it is the highest in the state and in the entirety of the mountain range. And when you say the Rockies, or the Rocky Mountains, that's not just one contiguous, unbroken mountain range. It's many different smaller mountain ranges together. And several of these mountain ranges in Colorado have mountains over 14,000 feet. Ooh, this is steep. Steep trail here. And many, 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 many rocks. So I just realized that the slope I've been hiking up, this is actually just a, a false summit. And this, which just came into my view, is the true summit. Oh well. It's pretty chilly. It was 29 degrees when I started hiking this morning. It's not quite that cold now, and the sun is out, which is nice. But my hands, my hands are, are pretty cold, especially handling the, the aluminum and carbon fiber of the, of the tripod here that I'm holding. And you can probably tell that's a little bit harder for me to speak. My mouth, my lips are cold, so it's making speaking a little bit awkward, but we press onward, onward and upward. Well, surprise, surprise, that was another false summit. This is not the actual summit. There's a nice reward from up here though. This, this whole high valley, the view of this all opened up. This is spectacular. But this is the proper summit. I'm confident that that is the actual, actual summit. It shouldn't take more than five or 10 minutes to get there. All right, guys, here we are. We have made it to the top of the Rocky Mountains, Mount Elbert, Colorado. 14,433 feet. Whew. So let's explore this area a little bit. These are Twin Lakes right here. This is looking south to the rest of the Sawatch Range. There are another 10 or 12 14,000 foot peaks to the south here. Gorgeous country. 
and this is looking around to the north. This is again Mount Massive, the second highest mountain in Colorado. The, one of these over here is Mount of the Holy Cross, another 14,000 foot peak. And this is the Mosquito Range over here. Found a place out of the wind here, kind of down from the, the summit ridge top. Let's go over some stats here. My ascent had 4,441 feet of elevation gain. One way distance, 5.79 miles. Took me three hours, 36 minutes, so about three and a half hours. Whew. Feels good. It's a beautiful place. I think this is state high point number 14, 13 or 14, somewhere in there for me. I've done almost all of them in the western U.S. now. To, to find a higher mountain from here, you need to go either west to the Sierras in California, where there is exactly one mountain higher, or north to the Yukon and Alaska and far northern British Columbia, where, where there are higher summits. There's nothing higher to the east in North America. And then to the south, you need to go to some high volcanoes in Mexico. So this mountain stands out, stands apart. It is the highest of Colorado's 50-something 14ers. That's what the 14,000 foot peaks are called, 14ers. I really enjoyed that hike. It was long and steep enough to be not easy, but it's the kind of thing that anyone can do if they train for it. Like it's never dangerous, never scary. It's pretty straightforward, so solid hike. To be honest, there are probably hundreds of mountains in Colorado that are more interesting <laughs> than this one. That doesn't mean it's not a beautiful place. Still a, a pretty mountain, still great views. I'm happy with uh, with the overall experience so far. So I'm off the mountain now, obviously. It took me about two hours and 40 minutes to hike down to my car, back to the trailhead. It was pretty uneventful, nothing much to report on that front. And I drove about 20 minutes from there back into town. I am in Leadville, Colorado. And Leadville is interesting because it is the highest elevation town in the United States. I'll put the elevation on the screen here. It's a really pretty little town. The main street area here has just really pretty, pretty buildings. And I, you know, if, you're, if you come to my channel looking for city content, you're going to be disappointed. I don't spend a lot of time in cities, but I like to just pass through them and, and see what they're like and occasionally show you what they're like, at least the, the more interesting parts. So that's what we're going to do here in Leadville. Uh, Leadville was a silver mining town. I think it had a couple of different boom periods, like in the in the 1860s and again in the in the 1880s. Yeah, let's walk around and just uh, look at some interesting stuff here. These days, Leadville is more of a tourist town and they're skiing here. Obviously, there's great hiking here. It's surrounded on multiple sides by 14,000 foot peaks. Really pretty spot. Let's walk a little bit further down. There's, there are uh, more interesting buildings down that way. And I realized by glancing over to my right as I was walking along the, the main street there. You can see Mount Elbert, that right there is the highest mountain in Colorado. That's where I was earlier today. And to the right of it is behind the pole there. That's, that's Mount Massive. So you've got big mountains on all sides of town here. And then again, more beautiful old buildings here. And then here are some of the buildings on the other side of the street, the side that I was standing on. I think it's time to leave town now, drive back up into the mountains.
Welcome to Independence Pass, elevation 12,095 feet. We are on the Continental Divide here, and this just beautiful paved road goes right up and over it. Pretty large parking area here, a couple of little micro ponds, beautiful mountain views. We are above treeline here. There's a scenic viewpoint you can walk to over here. Let's go check that out. And here's the viewpoint. Sweeping views looking down the, the way I came. The road comes up this canyon here and then switchbacks a few times up to the pass. Fantastic views. This little bump that you can see right here, that's the highest mountain that's visible from this spot. It's about 13,900 feet, called Casco Peak. I think 13908 is what that sign back there said. And the road here is the second highest state highway in Colorado. And this is the second highest paved pass in Colorado. There's one called Cottonwood Pass that's a little bit higher, but still really high. And then here is a slightly elevated view of the pass itself with the little parking area. So I came up from this direction. Leadville is this way. I'm going down this direction. Aspen is this way. So let's head down the other side. So not too far down from the top of the pass is a cluster of a few buildings. You can see them down there in this beautiful glacially carved valley. Those buildings are what's left of the town of Independence. It's a little ghost town up in the mountains. Elevation 10,900 feet. This was a little mining boom town. Gold here was discovered on July 4th, 1879. July 4th, 4th of July, hence the name Independence for this little town here. The 1880s were really the heyday of this place and it was never very big. I think at the peak it had about 1,500 people. But for a little, I mean, a little valley up in the mountains, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty substantial number. Here's a better look at the buildings. We've got this one over here, a couple over here, and then several remnants of buildings. Like you can see that thing right there. There's one right next to me here, an old log cabin, looks like. The different buildings are in various stages of of reconstruction and preservation. Some are more or less complete, like that one up there. Some are kind of halfway standing and have to be shored up with newer timber. And then others are just kind of piles of logs. There's one interesting historical episode that I wanted to relate to you guys. So the winter of 1899 was the worst winter in Colorado history, and there were still miners up here living up here year round. There was just a ton of snow up here. It was super cold and all of that snow cut off the town from supplies and the outside world. No supplies could get in to Independence here. And so the miners dismantled their homes and made 75 pairs of skis and skied out to safety down the mountain, down the canyon here to Aspen and made it out alive. I'm in the Yukon, by the way. Not like the place, but the vehicle. I'm in my new Yukon, GMC Yukon. And this is the first longer trip that I've taken with it. So we'll see how it goes. And there's one more stop that I wanted to make before I got to Aspen. And it's just a little picnic area, day use area. It's popular. There are a lot of cars here, but it it uh, seems like a pretty place. I saw a couple pictures of it earlier today and yeah, I wanted to stop and see it. It's called The Grottoes. Just a beautiful little area. Really interesting rock.
Well guys, I made it to Aspen, but now that I'm here, I don't really want to stay here or do anything. Uh, trying to find a parking spot was a pain. Lots of traffic, lots of people. It's a small little town. Um, I'll walk around a little bit and I'll show you the, you know, the mountains on the side here. This is a ski town and I can see the ski resort behind me here on this mountainside. Obviously there's no snow there now, but you can see, you know, the, the cuts where the, where the runs are. Here's the ski hill just right above town. I mean, it basically starts in town. And then I think the, the main kind of interesting area is up this way. So let's walk up the street or this way. Okay, change of plans. So I parked in this little kind of shopping center parking lot and there are signs everywhere saying that this is for, that the parking is for shopping center patrons and visitors only. And if you leave the premises, then your car is gonna get booted or towed. Now, I don't know how they're, they would enforce that, but it scared me enough to not want to leave my car parked here because that would, that would ruin the day for sure. So I'm going to drive through town one more time. I've driven through a couple times trying to find parking, ideally free parking. I passed a parking garage, but A, I don't want to pay for parking if I'm just going to be here for a few minutes and B, I'm worried about the height of my car with the cargo box and the solar panel on top. I don't want to go into a parking garage. So I'm going to drive through town. I'm going to try to find a place to park. If I can't find a place to park, we're leaving. My goal here was to see Aspen. I've seen it and it's not my scene. So anyway, let's get out of here. And I'm going to film as I drive through town here so that even if I can't find a place to park, at least I can say that I've shown you shown you Aspen, if only very briefly and and poorly. Okay, this is ridiculous. I cannot find parking anywhere around here, so. I'm gonna get out of town. <laughs> See ya, Aspen. If you wanna know what Aspen looks like, do a Google image search or come here and drive around while you try to find parking. <laughs> I'm gonna go find a place to camp. Talk to you guys later. Found a campsite just as it's getting dark. It's a nice spot though. I'm a couple hours away from where I wanted to be tonight, but I don't like finding a campsite in the dark. I'd rather drive in the dark in the morning and wake up early than drive in the dark at night and find a campsite in the dark. So this place will be home for the night. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a long day. I've been up since five. I was up at five and I was hiking at 5.30. I think earlier I might've said that I woke up at 5.30, but I woke up at five and started hiking at 5.30. It is now 7.30. So that's, what, 14 and a half hours that I've been on the go. I'm tired, it's time for dinner. I'm just gonna have some turkey sandwiches with some hummus. It was a beautiful day today. Tomorrow will be equally beautiful, I promise. Be sure to check back for that video and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.